Itihad Arabic, Itihad, id, tihad, lit, physical or mental effort, expended in a particular activity is an Islamic legal term referring to independent reasoning or the thorough exertion of a jurist's mental faculty in finding a solution to a legal question. It is contrasted with taklid imitation, conformity to legal precedent. According to classical Sunni theory, itihad requires expertise in the Arabic language, theology, revealed texts, and principles of jurisprudence and is not employed where authentic and authoritative texts Quran and Hadith are considered unambiguous with regard to the question, or where there is an existing scholarly consensus Itihad is considered to be a religious duty for those qualified to perform it. An Islamic scholar who is qualified to perform itihad is called a mujtahid. By the beginning of the 10th century, development of Sunni jurisprudence prompted leading Sunni jurists to state that the main legal questions had been addressed and the scope of itihad was gradually restricted. In the modern era, this gave rise to a perception among Western scholars and lay Muslim public that the so called gate of itihad was closed at the start of the classical era. While recent scholarship has disproved this notion, the extent and mechanisms of legal change in the post-formative period remain a subject of debate. Starting from the 18th century, some Muslim reformers began calling for abandonment of taklid and emphasis on itihad, which they saw as a return to Islamic origins. Public debates in the Muslim world surrounding itihad continue to the present day. The advocacy of itihad has been particularly associated with Islamic modernists and purist Salafi thinkers. Among contemporary Muslims in the West there have emerged new visions of itihad which emphasize substantive moral values over traditional juridical methodology. Shia jurists did not use the term itihad until the 12th century, but they employed a rational mode of legal reasoning from the early period, and its scope was not narrowed as in the Sunni tradition, with the exception of Zaydi jurisprudence. Topic. Etymology and definition The word derives from the three-letter Arabic verbal root of jhd jihada, struggle. The t is inserted because the word is a derived stemate verb. In its literal meaning, the word refers to effort, physical or mental, expended in a particular activity. In its technical sense, itihad can be defined as a process of legal reasoning and hermeneutics through which the jurist Mujtahid derives or rationalizes law on the basis of the Quran and the Sunnah." The juristic meaning of itihad has several definitions according to scholars of Islamic legal theory. Some define it as the jurist's action and activity to reach a solution. Al-Ghazali d. 505 defines it as the total expenditure of effort made by a jurist for the purpose of obtaining the religious rulings. Similarly, the itihad is defined as the effort made by the mujtahid in seeking knowledge of the arkham rulings of the Sharia, Islamic canonical law, through interpretation. From this point of view, that itihad essentially consists of an inference, istinbat, that extends to a probability, zan. Thus it excludes the extraction of a ruling from a clear text as well as rulings made without recourse to independent legal reasoning. A knowledgeable person who gives a ruling on the sharia, but is not able to exercise their judgment in the inference of the rulings from the sources, is not called a mujtahid but rather a muqalid. <laughs> <laughs> Scriptural basis Islamic scholar Asghar Ali Engineer cites a hadith related by a Sahabi companion of the Islamic prophet Muhammad by the name of Mu'a ibn Jabal also Marad bin Jabal, as the basis for itihad. According to the hadith from Sunan Abu Dawood, Book 24, Mu'a was appointed by Muhammad to go to Yemen. Before leaving he was asked how he would judge when the occasion of deciding a case arose. Marad said, according to the Quran. The Prophet thereupon asked what he would do if he did not find the solution to the problem in the Quran, to which Marad said he would govern according to the Sunnah. But when the Prophet asked if he could not find it in the Sunnah also, Marad said, Anna ajtahadu. I will exert myself to find the solution. The Prophet thereupon patted his back and told him he was right. History
Topic: <laughs> Formative period. During the early period, Itihad referred to the exercise of one's discretionary opinion on the basis of the knowledge of the precedent ILM. Jurists used Rari to help reach legal rulings, in cases where the Quran and Sunnah did not provide clear direction for certain decisions. It was the duty of the educated jurists to come to a ruling that would be in the best interest of the Muslim community and promote the public good. As religious law continued to develop over time, Rari became insufficient in making sure that fair legal rulings were being derived in keeping with both the Quran and Sunnah. However, during this time, the meaning and process of itihad became more clearly constructed. Itihad was limited to a systematic method of interpreting the law on the basis of authoritative texts, the Quran and Sunnah, and the rulings could be extended to a new problem as long as the precedent and the new situation shared the same clause. As the practice of itihad transformed over time, it became religious duty of a mujtahid to conduct legal rulings for the Muslim society. Mujtahid is defined as a Muslim scholar that has met certain requirements including a strong knowledge of the Quran, Sunnah, and Arabic, as well as a deep understanding of legal theory and the precedent, all of which allows them to be considered fully qualified to practice itihad. Classical <laughs> <laughs> era Around the beginning of the 10th century, most Sunni jurists argued that all major matters of religious law had been settled, allowing for taklid, the established legal precedents and traditions, to take priority over itihad. This move away from the practice of itihad was made by the Hanafi and Maliki law schools, and the majority of Shavis, but not by Hanbalis or a number of prominent Shavi jurists who believed that, true consensus. IJM, apart from that of Muhammad's companions, did not exist, and that the constant continuous existence of mujtahids was a theological requirement. Quote, After the 11th century, Sunni legal theory developed systems for ranking jurists according to their qualifications for itihad. One such ranking placed the founders of madhabs, who were credited with being absolute mujtahids. Mujtahid Mutlaq capable of methodological innovation, at the top, and jurists capable only of taklid at the bottom, with mujtahids and those who combined itihad and taklid given the middle ranks. In the 11th century, jurists required a mufti to be a mujtahid. By the middle of the 13th century, however, most scholars considered a mukhalid practitioner of taklid to be qualified for the role. During that era some jurists began to ponder whether practitioners of itihad continued to exist and the phrase, closing of the gate of itihad, aglak bab al itihad appeared after the 16th century, the settling of Sunni law and increasing prominence of taklid has at one point led most Western scholars to believe that the gate of itihad was in fact effectively closed around 900 CE. In a 1964 monograph, which exercised considerable influence on later scholars, Joseph Schacht wrote that, A consensus gradually established itself to the effect that from that time onwards no one could be deemed to have the necessary qualifications for independent reasoning in religious law, and that all future activity would have to be confined to the explanation, application, and, at the most, interpretation of the doctrine as it had been laid down once and for all. While more recent research has disproved the notion that the practice of itihad was abandoned in the 10th century or even later the extent of legal change during this period and its mechanisms remain a subject of scholarly debate. Shi'i Muslims recognized human reasoning and intellect as a legal source that supplements the Quran and other revealed texts, thus, continuing to acknowledge the importance of itihad. Modern era During the turn of the 16th to 17th century, Sunni Muslim reformers began to criticize taklid, and promoted greater use of itihad in legal matters. They claimed that instead of looking solely to previous generations for practices developed by religious scholars, there should be an established doctrine and rule of behavior through the interpretation of original foundational texts of Islam—the Quran and Sunnah. Islamic modernism 
Starting in the middle of the 19th century, Islamic modernists such as Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, and Muhammad Abdu emerged seeking to revitalize Islam by re-establish and reform Islamic law and its interpretations to accommodate Islam with modern society. They emphasized the use of itihad, but in contrast to its original use, they sought to apply contemporary intellectual methods, such as academic or scientific thought, to the task of reforming Islam. Al-Afghani proposed the new use of itihad that he believed would enable Muslims to think critically and apply their own individual interpretations of the innovations of modernity in the context of Islam. One modernist argument for applying itihad to Sharia law is that while the principles and values underlying Sharia .e. USUL al -fiqh, are unalterable, human interpretation of Sharia is not. Another, made by Asghar Ali Engineer of India, is that the adat customs and traditions of Arabs were used in the development of the Sharia, and form an important part of it. They are very much not divine or immutable, and have no more legal justification to be part of the Sharia than the adat of Muslims living beyond the home of the original Muslim in the Arab Hejaz. The Ummah was no longer a homogenous group but comprised of various cultural communities with their own age-old customs and traditions. When Imam al-Shafi'i moved from Hejaz to Egypt, which was a confluence of Arab and Coptic cultures, he realized this and changed his position on several issues. In Indonesia, following considerable debate among the ulama, Indonesian adat become part of Sharia as applicable in that country. This use of itihad to apply adat applies to mu'amalat socio-economic matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, rather than ibadah fiqh, ritual salat, sawm, zakat, etc. Asghar Ali engineer argues that while the Arab adat the Quran was revealed in was highly patriarchal and still informs what is understood as sharia, the transcendental Quranic vision is for absolutely equal rights between genders and should guide itihad of sharia. <laughs> Islamism and Salafism Contemporary Salafis are major proponents of itihad. They criticize taklid and believe itihad makes modern Islam more authentic and will guide Muslims back to the golden age of early Islam. Salafis assert that reliance on taklid has led to Islam's decline. The Muslim Brotherhood traces its founding philosophies to al Afghani's itihad. The Muslim Brotherhood holds that the practice of itihad will strengthen the faith of believers by compelling them to better familiarize themselves with the Quran and come to their own conclusions about its teachings. But as a political group the Muslim Brotherhood faces a major paradox between itihad as a religious matter and as a political one. Itihad weakens political unity and promotes pluralism, which is also why many oppressive regimes reject itihad's legitimacy. The Iranian Ayatollah Rahola Khomeini envisioned a prominent role for itihad in his political theory of guardianship of the jurist. Vilayat e Faki, Osama bin Laden supported itihad. He criticized the Saudi regime for disallowing the free believer and imposing harsh restrictions on successful practice of Islam. Thus, bin Laden believed his striving for the implementation of itihad was his duty. Taklif. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Qualifications of a mujtahid. A mujtahid Arabic diligent is an individual who is qualified to exercise itihad in the evaluation of Islamic law. The female equivalent is a mujtahida. In general mujtahids must have an extensive knowledge of Arabic, the Quran, the Sunnah, and legal theory Sunni Islam and Shi'i Islam, due to their divergent beliefs regarding the persistence of divine authority, have different views on itihad and the qualifications required to achieve mujtahid. In order to clarify how itihad differs in Sunni and Shi'i Islam it is necessary to explore the historical development of this position in both branches. Sunni In the years immediately following Muhammad's death, Sunni Muslims practiced itihad because they saw it as an acceptable form of the continuation of sacred instruction. Sunni Muslims, therefore, began to practice itihad primarily through the use of personal opinion, or rari. 
As Muslims turned to the Quran and Sunnah to solve their legal issues, they began to recognize that these divine proponents did not deal adequately with certain topics of law. Therefore, Sunni Muslims began to find other ways and sources for itihad such as rari, which allowed for personal judgment of Islamic law. Sunni Muslims justified this practice of rari with a particular hadith, which cites Muhammad's approval of forming an individual sound legal opinion if the Quran and Sunnah contain no explicit text regarding that particular issue. Therefore, during the first two and a half centuries of Islam there were no restrictions placed on scholars interested in practicing itihad. Beginning in the 9th century, jurists began to make more restrictions on who could practice itihad and the kinds of qualifications necessary. Therefore, the practice of itihad became limited to a qualified scholar and jurist otherwise known as a mujtahid. Abul Hussein al-Basri provides the earliest and most expansive outline for the qualifications of a mujtahid, they include Enough knowledge of Arabic so that the scholar can read and understand both the Quran and the Sunnah. Extensive comprehensive knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. More specifically, the scholar must have a full understanding of the Quran's legal contents. In regards to the Sunnah the scholar must understand the specific texts that refer to law and also the incidence of abrogation in the Sunnah. Must be able to confirm the consensus of the companions, the successors, and the leading imams and mujtahideen of the past, in order to prevent making decisions that disregard these honored decisions made in the past. Should be able to fully understand the objectives of the sharia and be dedicated to the protection of the five principles of Islam, which are life, religion, intellect, lineage, and property. Be able to distinguish strength and weakness in reasoning, or in other words exercise logic. Must be sincere and a good person. From the declaration of these requirements of mujtahid onwards, legal scholars adopted these characteristics as being standard for anyone looking to practice itihad. In order for the reasoning of these mujtahids to be accepted as law, multiple mujtahids had to reach IJMA. This allowed for mujtahids to openly discuss their particular views and reach a conclusion together. The interaction required by IJMA allowed for mujtahids to circulate ideas and eventually merge to create particular Islamic schools of law madhabs. This consolidation of mujtahids into particular madhabs prompted these groups to create their own distinct authoritative rules. These laws reduced issues of legal uncertainty that had been present when multiple mujtahids were working together with one another. However, with this introduction of common laws for each madhab, legal scholars began to dismiss the practice of independent itihad and instead maintained the title of mujtahid only for the founders of the four main schools of Islamic law Hanafiya, Malikiya, Shafiya, Hanbaliya. Therefore, from the 12th century onwards jurists could occupy the position of a mujtahid or access itihad in only two cases, when distinguishing between the manifest and the obscure views of their particular schools or when they served as imitators of mujtahids, expressing the views of the more qualified mujtahids before them. Therefore, the practice of itihad was restricted in favor of taklid. These Sunni restrictions on the power of the mujtahid and were due to historical developments and should not be accepted as terms of the original legal theory of itihad. Shia The Shia Muslims understand the process of itihad as being the independent effort used to arrive at the rulings of sharia. Following the death of the Prophet and once they had determined the Imam as absent, itihad evolved into a practice of applying careful reason in order to uncover the knowledge of what Imams would have done in particular legal situations. The decisions the Imams would have made were explored through the application of the Quran, Sunnah, Ijma and Aql reason. It was not until the end of the 18th century that the title of mujtahid became associated with the term faqih or one who is an expert in jurisprudence. From this point on religious courts began to increase in number and the ulama were transformed by Shi'i Islamic authorities into the new producer of itihad. In order to produce perceptive mujtahids that could fulfill this important role, principles of Shi'i jurisprudence were developed to provide a foundation for scholarly deduction of Islamic law. Sheikh Murtada Ansari and his successors developed the school of Shi'i law, dividing the legal decisions into four categories of certainty QAT, valid conjecture zan, doubt shak, and erroneous conjecture wham. 
These rules allowed Mujtahids to issue adjudications on any subject, that could be derived through this process of itihad, demonstrating their great responsibility to the Shi'i community. Furthermore, according to Shi'i Islamic jurisprudence, a believer of Islam is either a mujtahid, one that expresses their own legal reasoning, or a mukhalid, one performing taklid of a mujtahid, and a mutat, one who acts with precaution. Most Shi'i Muslims qualify as mukhalid, and therefore are very dependent on the rulings of the mujtahids. Therefore, the mujtahids must be well prepared to perform itihad, as the community of mukhalid are dependent on their rulings. Not only did Shi'i Muslims require knowledge of the texts of the Quran and Sunnah, justice in matters of public and personal life, utmost piety, understanding of the cases where Shi'i mujtahids reached consensus, Ability to exercise competence and authority however, these scholars also depended on further training that could be received in religious centers called Horza. At these centers they are taught the important subjects and technical knowledge a mujtahid need be proficient in such as Arabic grammar and literature Logic Extensive knowledge of the Quranic sciences and hadith Science of narrators Principle of jurisprudence Comparative jurisprudence. Therefore, Shi'i mujtahids remain revered throughout the Shi'i Islamic world. The relationship between the mujtahids and mukhalids continues to address and solve the contemporary legal issues. Participating in itihad, however, has been cautioned by scholars for those not properly educated in interpretation of the Quran. This is narrated by Ali ibn Husayn Zayn al Abidin, the great grandson of Muhammad, when he cautioned Aban ibn Abi Ayyash, a fellow companion, saying, O brother from Abd Keys, if the issue becomes clear to you, then accept it. Otherwise remain silent and defer to Allah because your interpretation from the truth will be as far from the earth as the sky. <laughs> Female Mujtahids A woman can be a mujtahid and there are dozens who have attained the rank in the modern history of Iran for instance, Amina bint al-Majlisi in the Safavid era, Bibi Khanum in the Qayyar era, Lady Amin in the Pahlavi era, and Zore Safati during the time of the Islamic Republic. There are diverging opinions as to whether a female mujtahid can be a marja or not. Zore Safati and some male jurists believe a female mujtahida can become a marja. In other words, they believe that believers perform taklid emulation of a female mujtahid, but many male jurists believe a marja must be male. Topic. See also. Biblical hermeneutics. Grand Ayatollahs. Islamic Golden Age. Istisan. Liberal movements within Islam. List of Islamic terms in Arabic Marja